Let's take a look at two variable equations. V equals 10t is an equation that shows how fast meters per second something is going. V, based on how far it travels over a certain amount of time, t, scientists are using the equation in an experiment where the distance is always the same as they are testing out how long it takes the different remote control cars to go the same distance. How fast is a car going if it takes nine seconds? Okay, so when you have two variables, in this case v and t, you really wanna read and make sure you know which one stands for which. So how fast something is going in meters per second is v. Okay, so another way to say how fast would be the speed, right? The speed in meters per second. Okay, and they said over a certain amount of time, t. So t would be our time, and since they're talking about meters per second, and they told us nine seconds, this would be our time. So t is equal to our time in seconds. Okay, so if the question was how far is a car going if it takes nine seconds, well, you have to ask yourself, is that nine, v, or t? Well, it's not the speed, it's the number of seconds. So it would be the time or t. So that means I'm gonna substitute or put nine in place of t since it stands for time. Okay, well my equation was this, v is equal to 10t. So when I substitute or put nine in place of the t, that would say v is equal to 10 times nine. Okay, well 10 times nine gives me 90, so it's a velocity or speed of 90, and that was in meters per second. V equals 10t is an equation that shows how fast in meters per second something is going V based on how far it travels over a certain amount of time, t. Scientists are using the equation in an experiment where the distance is always the same as they are testing how long it takes different remote control cars to go the same distance. How fast is a car going if it takes four seconds? All right, so this is almost the same question, right? We have the same equation, V equals 10t. V is still the speed, right? How fast it's going in meters per second. And t is still our time in seconds. The only thing different is they told us this time it takes four seconds. Okay, well we know V is the speed. We know T is our time in seconds. So if it's four seconds, that means T is equal to four. Right, seconds would be time, not speed. So when I plug this into my equation, I'm going to substitute, meaning put 4 in place of t. So v equals 10. Notice 10t, next to means multiplication. So this means 10 times t. So I'm going to say 10 times 4, which gives me 40. So that means my velocity or speed is 40, and that was in meters per second. This equation shows how the time required to ring up a customer is related to the number of items being purchased. T equals 7P. The variable P represents the number of items being purchased, and the variable T represents the number of minutes required to ring up the customer. How long does it take to ring up a customer with three items? Okay, well this was our equation, T equals 7P. P was the number of items, and T was the number of minutes. Okay, so when a customer has three items, the first thing you wanna do is decide, is that three gonna be P or T? Well, items, right, the number of items, they told us was P. So I'm gonna say P is equal to three, which tells me to substitute or put three in place of P in my original equation. 
Well, the original equation was t is equal to 7p. Remember, that means t equals 7 times p. So I'm going to say t is equal to 7 times 3. Okay, well, 7 times 3 is 21. So that means it would take 21 minutes. Seems like a long time, but they did say the number of minutes. Okay, so 21 minutes to ring up that customer. The following equation shows how much money per hour Madison makes. M equals 4H. The variable H represents the number of hours worked, and the variable M represents the total money earned. How much money does Madison make if she works seven hours? Okay, so let's read through. The equation was M equals 4H. We know H stood for the number of hours, and M was for the total money. So if she's working seven hours, we want to decide, is that seven going to be M or H? Well, seven hours, they told us H was the number of hours, so that means H is equal to seven. So I'm going to substitute or put seven in place of H. All right, well, my equation was M is equal to four times H. So I'm going to say m is equal to 4 times 7. Now you can use your parentheses here to show multiplication. You can also use the multiplication dot or sign if that's easier for you. They mean the same thing. Either way, I'm saying 4 times 7, and that's going to be 28. And since that's the money she earned, we would say she would earn a total of $28. Q equals 4T plus 4 is the equation of how many questions Q, Zachary can answer in a specified amount of time, T, in hours. If Zachary has three hours, how many questions can he answer? All right, so this was the equation. Q equals 4T plus 4. We know Q stood for the number of questions. T stood for the time in hours. So if he has three hours, well, time was t, so that would mean t is equal to three, right? Q was the questions, t was the time. So three hours is our time, or t equals three. All right, well, to figure out how many questions he can answer, I'm going to substitute or put three in place of t, and then I'll evaluate for q. All right, so q is equal to four, okay? This means 4 times t, so I'm going to say 4 times 3, and then we still have to say plus 4. Now, please don't forget, you always have to use order of, of operations, right? Order of operations here, because we have more than one thing. We've got multiplication and addition. So remember, if you think gemdas, that's rem a reminder, right? Grouping, then exponents. We don't have any of those but then multiplication or division has to happen before addition or subtraction. So I'm gonna make sure that I multiply four times three first. That's gonna give me 12, and then I can add on the four. So Q equals 12 plus four. 12 plus four gives me 16. So that means he can answer 16 questions in those three hours. P equals 6G plus 10 is the equation that Matthew uses to cook food for the guests at a hotel. I think this is supposed to be guests, not gusts. The variable P is plate, and the variable G is the number of guests currently staying there. If there are nine guests at the hotel tonight, how many plates should Matthew prepare? All right, so this is our equation, P equals 6G plus 10. We know G stands for the number of guests, P is plate, so if there's seven guests, how many plates should he prepare? All right, well, seven guests, guests were G, so that would mean that G is equal to seven. Okay, so we're going to substitute 
7 in place of g, and then we're going to solve or evaluate to find p how many plates he needs to prepare. Okay, so p was equal to 6, 6g six means 6 times g, right? So 6 times, in place of g, we're putting 7 because there were 7 guests, and then plus 10. Now, just like last time, you have to keep order of operations in mind and make sure that you multiply first before you add. So first, I'm going to say 6 times 7, right? That gives me 42. And then I'm going to add on the 10. So 42 plus 10, that's a total of 52 plates that Matthew has to prepare.